All right. Good morning, everybody. Again, happy Ides of March. It is March 15th. Again, you may turn your cameras off now if you haven't done so already. Um, so we're going to really quickly, there's a, only a couple of things we're going to do today. Um, first one, though, is I'm going to have us watch a video um, where it's basically about the Ides of March. Figured, you know, if it's the eyes of March, we should probably talk about it. So let's go ahead and I'm going to change my screen over so you guys can watch the video. Let me actually make it so you can hear it. That'd be helpful. Okay. Beware the Ides of March. You've probably heard someone say this in a spooky tone of voice, be it your history teacher, your dramatic theater friend, or in movies and TV shows. Speak once again. Beware the Ides of March. He is a dreamer. Let us leave him. This is probably good advice, as many people who didn't heed these words throughout history have met a truly gruesome fate. But what are the Ides of March, and why should we be so wary? This is Ancient Origins, and today we will be exploring the bloody history of the Ides of March. The Ides of March was a very significant date in the Roman calendar. Taking place every March 15th, Today, it's best known for being the date on which Julius Caesar was assassinated. However, it was recognized by the Romans long before the dictator's death and is still viewed as a highly symbolic date to this day. In the Roman religion, the Ides of a month was sacred to the king of the gods, Jupiter, and the Jovian high priest, known as Flamen Dialis, would lead a procession through the city citadel, concluding with the sacrifice of an Ides sheep. But what of the famous phrase, beware the Ides of March? Where did that come from? We know that Julius Caesar was famously killed on this day in 44 BC. According to Plutarch's Roman Lives, a soothsayer had previously warned Caesar that he would suffer disaster on the Ides of March, an idea which Caesar scoffed at. Finally, on his way to the theater of Pompey, Caesar saw the same soothsayer and mocked him, saying, the Ides of March have come, joking that the prophecy had not come to fruition. The soothsayer replied, I, Caesar, but not gone. Moments later, Caesar was stabbed to death no less than 23 times by dozens of senators and friends, with as many as 60 conspirators involved in the plot. This was recounted in Shakespeare's famous play, Julius Caesar, and it's where the phrase, Beware the Ides of March, comes from. This event shook Roman society to its core, ultimately leading to civil war and ushering in the end of the Roman Republic. Four years later, Caesar's adopted heir, Octavian, had 300 enemy senators and soldiers executed at the altar of Julius Caesar, who had recently been made a god. Ancient historians Suetonius and Cassius Dio record that this was a religious sacrifice, which was very unusual as the Romans did not typically sacrifice human beings, and that it fell on the Ides of March, on the anniversary of Caesar's death. This was clearly not an accident. Octavian did this to avenge his adoptive father, spilling the blood of his enemies on the assassinated dictator's shrine. Octavian would later go on to become the first Roman emperor and take the name Augustus. All of this explains why the Romans held the Ides of March with such reverence. It's clear that the amount of history and significant religious connotations surrounding this day will never be forgotten. As long as we study history, we will always beware the Ides of March. Mister, you're on mute. Thank you. Um, so we actually already read the murder scene last week, but again, it's kind of crazy to see like how many times, you know, 
he was actually stabbed, you know, it was kind of excessive, you know, like they didn't need to do it that many times, but yet, you know, they did. So it kind of shows that there might've been some emotion behind it. But um, like I said, I just kind of wanted to reemphasize that that's what today is. So this is an anniversary as it were of Julius Caesar's death. Sorry, I'm just waiting for my slides to pop back up. Yep, so it was, let's see, I'm trying to do the math in my head. 2065 years ago today is when Julius Caesar died. There it goes, now it's starting to work. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, Daniel, did you have a question or did you accidentally raise your hand? Okay, just checking. Okay, sorry, I'm just waiting for this to load, but a um, couple of things that I wanted to talk to you about. For one, um, I'm pretty sure that they've fixed the podcasting situation. You should be able to uh, listen to it again. So I will probably start recording podcasts again. And even when we come back in person, um, that is something that I already did before uh, the pandemic shutdown is again to allow you guys more time to work in class. A lot of my homework is based off of you guys doing the um, listening, like listening to my lecture basically on your own time. So that way you have more time to write in class. So again, that will still be part of class even when we do come back. Sorry, let me get to, there we go. So what I'm going to have you guys do now, it says it's technically a quiz. It's not really a quiz. Don't like, I mean, it is worth points you doing it. So you do have to answer all the questions, but it's not like there's no right or wrong answers. It's just basically we're coming back next Monday, right? So that's when we're going to be coming back to school. You um, Have you guys received any information about like if you're AM or PM yet or not yet? No, okay, so I'm guessing, I know we're supposed to get our rosters tomorrow, I believe, so I'm sure you're gonna be finding out either today or tomorrow. Um, so like I said, if you are a bus rider, if you have to ride the bus, um, you will be afternoon. So I could just tell you that right away, that that's the only time that they have buses running because the buses are doing the elementary in the morning. And obviously with like social distancing rules, they have to have more buses for uh, less students at one time. So that's, again, why in the afternoon, the 11 o'clock session is going to be the bus time. And then the morning session will be students who are close to the school, don't need the bus, um, which honestly, if I, I would prefer that one. But I mean, obviously, that's just my preference. I'm more of a morning person. I know some of you guys um, would never see the morning if it wasn't for school. But um, Again, you're going back, so next, well, next Monday will be virtual. Every Monday is gonna be virtual still, um, but it'll be next Tuesday will be the first day you're back. And it'll be periods one through three, just like it has been. The only difference is um, you're only going to AM or PM. It just depends on what they tell you. So again, if you're AM, you'll be like from eight to like 10, 55 or 11 or something like that. Yeah, so that's what that's what this quiz is about. Because again, it's um, basically you're going to have the option of coming back online or or coming back in person, um, or you can remain online in uh, by doing Edgenuity. Um, obviously, I've already talked to some students where they've told me that their parents um, don't want them to come back for either the student's health because they maybe have an underlying condition that could be putting them at risk for COVID. Um, having more serious reaction to it, or they live with somebody like an elderly family member or like, you know, something like that, or a family member who ha also like has underlying health conditions that puts them at a higher risk. So um, again, it's going to be Mondays will be online for everybody. It's going to be for, it's going to be virtual. And then Tuesday through Friday, again, Tuesday and Thursday is periods one through three. Wednesday and Friday are periods four through six. So um, 
but again, you'll either be an AM or PM session, but yes, it'll be Tuesday through Friday, you'll be um, coming to school. So go ahead and take the quiz. I'm wanting you guys to kind of do it a little quicker if you can, you don't have to write me like an essay or anything, but I just wanna kind of like see if I could answer any of the questions that you might have while we're in class. So that way I can address them. So if you guys could go ahead and do the quiz. In fact, I will just give you the link to it in the chat so you don't have to navigate. Yeah, start right now. Like I said, try to finish it in like five or 10 minutes. So that way I could spend the last like five minutes of class answering some of the questions. Or just addressing any issues, if there are any. The last question is about writing, but you can also ask me questions about the um, coming back too.
All right, we got some students responding. And I'm not gonna like call out any names. I'm just gonna read them. Um, I will say though, actually, Andres, if you can um, fix, if you can do question number four, question you were supposed to ask a question. So if you can um, ask some sort of question about it, that'd be great. Maybe about like you know what you're struggling with, but yeah, it does question four does need to be a question. Okay, so one question is how to add good points. And my biggest suggestion for that is just always think about what the prompt is asking you. I think a lot of you um, kind of get off track as far as like what's being asked. So like, for example, the last couple of brief rights have been about two rhetorical strategies. And some of you start talking about like why Cassius doesn't like Caesar or something like that. But really you're just, all you're supposed to be talking about is talking about the two strategies and why they were effective. You're not like supposed to be giving like your opinion or anything. So I would just say, always ask yourself, am I like answering the prompt? Am I like, basically, am I saying, am I doing what I said I was gonna be doing? So I think that as far as the good points, don't worry about the good points, just make sure that you're doing what you said you were gonna be doing or doing what you're being asked to do. Uh, let's see. Okay, let me look at the next one. Okay, so this is a good question. It's about what if you get stuck and you don't know what to write. I think that um, as far as that goes, like writer writer's block, as stupid as it sounds, I think honestly, a lot of you, um, not a lot of you, but some of you will get get stuck and then you just not don't write anything. I would, going back to what I just said, even if you write something and it's wrong, as long as you're willing to go back and make changes and fix it, because like I said, every writing that I do for like grad school or even before grad school, I go through and I make tons of changes to what I've already wrote because Maybe there's a part that doesn't really make that sense because um, I've like started talking about something different or I just want to change the way I phrase something. So I think that it's important just to keep writing, um, even if you're unsure about if it makes sense. Because, again, I'd rather you have something. And I feel like a lot of students like think that teachers expect perfection and I don't expect perfection. Um, I would rather have something imperfectly written than something not written at all. So my best advice to you, if you get stuck, is just to write something. And even if it's wrong or needs to be fixed, that's way better than having nothing written down at all. So uh, let's see, next one. There's still a few of you who need to finish this up. Again, it's just four quick questions. As far as the transitions, I will fully admit transitions kind of are just a skill that you have to learn how to do. And I wish we'll do some practices when we start writing our essay, which we're going to write the essay. I was going to start it next week, but I decided just to wait till um, after spring break because next week we're going to obviously need some transition to kind of get used to being back in the classroom. So I didn't want to say, hey, welcome back. Here's an essay. You have to do this all before you go on spring break. So I decided just to wait on that. But um, we will practice transitions. In fact, that might be one of those things that we practice next week is how to do a transitions because I know a lot of people struggle with that. And I think once you get the hang of doing it, it's, it's easier than some of you kind of expect or some of you kind of like overthink it. So... It's not that I'm gonna expect more writing, but it will be easier to do some of the revision. Now we're still not gonna be able to like share papers or anything like I normally would, because normally I have you print up copies of your essay to share, but obviously we can't do that right now. So we will continue having to share like virtually. Um, but yeah, it's not gonna be any more writing. It's basically just, no, you can't do it on paper. 
Desi, you have to, again, for one, COVID issues, but two, I have to be able to check for plagiarism. So it's got to be something that's done online. Plus, some of, some of your guys' handwriting sucks, just like mine. So we have to do it on, we have to do everything online. And plus, nothing is done in paper anymore. I don't know if you guys know this, but like most business is done on computer. So we need, you guys need to learn how to use uh, technology in order to work. Uh, let's see. Still got about six minutes before the end of class. I'm going to refresh it because I think probably more of you have finished. It just hasn't updated yet. Okay, so uh, one student is asking if you don't understand it um, and you don't know what to write about. Here's the problem. Now, I will say that I know that Shakespeare is difficult to understand, but there's also, I'm willing to bet some of you who are saying that you don't understand it haven't really been paying too much attention during class and or watch the videos super carefully because again, I feel like I give a lot of explanations and you can correct me if I'm wrong, obviously. Um, But I feel like I am pretty thorough with explaining what's happening in the different parts of the play. Um, do people disagree with me that I don't explain that much? I mean, you can, and I'm not going to like call you out in front of everybody. But like I said, I try to be, I try to make it easier for you to understand by breaking it down, like stopping after a few like conversations or exchanges with characters. So that way, um, you know what they're saying at least, or know the gist of what's going on. So does anybody like, and like I said, if you disagree with me, I'm not going to get defensive about it. I just want to know that if I'm explaining it for you, like, uh, if I'm explaining Shakespeare, like if I'm explaining like what's happening in the story, does it make sense when I explain it or what can I do better for you? Aaron, yeah, that's fine. Uh, any, so we only have a few minutes left. Um, and again, I did ask you guys a question and I'm not seeing any responses. Um, but does anybody think that like, is there like, am I explaining Shakespeare to you guys okay? Like when, like if you're paying attention, if you're not paying attention and you're saying that like, I'm not explaining it, then obviously that's kind of on you. Like, cause I know there's some of you who check out who like at the end of class, I have to remove because you've wandered away from the iPad. So obviously if you're not paying attention during class, I like that, you know, you not understanding it is kind of a thing you need to like force yourself to focus on more. <laughs> so like I said, just unfortunately, if you're not putting in work, then it kind of makes it more difficult for you to understand what's going on. Um, I'm going to check one more question. How can you get prepared before writing? That's a good question. Um, one of the things that I do to get prepared for writing, and this student said like listening to music, that's everybody is different. So personally, I like to do something physically active before I start writing, you know, like I like to walk or run or do something, you know, before I, I, I just, I like to get the blood flowing kind of, you know, and it just like makes me more like focused on what I'm going to do. Plus I get less fidgety if I'm going to, if I'm sitting down for too long, you know, and I'm sure most of you are the same way. Um, but I also prepare, like, I, like, I always make an outline of what I'm going to write. I find all the quotes that I'm going to use. I kind of like make a game plan almost of what I'm going to write before I start actually writing. So I think that prep is definitely a big thing that helps me. But um, anyways, for those of you who haven't finished, again, this is 10 points and I'm just asking for your opinion. Um, like I said, there's no right or wrong answers. I just want you guys, I just want to know what you guys are feeling. Um, I started, I'm completely caught up with grading other than the DCS brief, right? And I've graded a few of those last night, but everything else is 100% caught up. 
So if you feel like you've done something, you need to double check to make sure, first of all, you submitted it correctly, you submitted it to the right assignment, because some of you have submitted like Decius to Cassius, Cassius to Decius, the wrong at. So like, just make sure you're turning stuff into the right assignment um, and then resubmit it if you need to. And then I will go back and change it once you've done that. It, auto, it automatically tells me when you've turned something in. So in Canvas, so you don't have to tell me that you've turned something in for, for that. So, but anyways, um, yeah. So we have school tomorrow. Uh, so I have you guys um, periods one through three tomorrow. So again, we are online this week. We will be back to uh, person next week though. So have a great Monday. Have a good Ides of March. <laughs>